Hello. Today I'm going to have um, a video that covers the foundations of XBIM. XBIM is a software toolkit that uh, is available open source for everybody and that includes f functions to work with uh, the building smart uh, data model. Um, some of you are probably familiar with the IFC files uh, or industry foundation classes files. What they are is a um, representation of building models that can be used to exchange data between different software applications, different building information modeling applications. Um, these include uh, software to design buildings such as uh, Revit or Archicad or a number of other platforms and other tools that build on this information to enrich them and add multiple dimensions such as cost information or time information. We call these 4D or 5D applications. Um, there is much more that can be done um, with uh, the information that is contained in these models and XBIM is a tool that you can use to extend the functionalities available to your application by writing your own piece of software. We call this a uh, middleware. So in this um, short video I'll be now covering the foundations of what you need to do to get things started with XBIM and uh, writing your first software application that can deal with information in a building information model. So I will start by showing you the home page of the XBIM project and that is xbim.codeplex.com Codeplex is a, a Microsoft uh, hosted open source repository uh, and we're using this at the moment to store all of our source code. Uh, but uh, Codeplex offers more than that. It allows us to provide uh, general information to you on the toolkit that you see on the home page and um, it allows us to um, support discussions with you. You can come to this section to add any questions that you have on the ways in which the toolkit can be used. Uh, you can access uh, some of the documentation information. There is a getting started guide and a few samples that you can download and uh, one of the core aspects of this uh, Codeplex website is that allows us to offer you all of the source code for XBIM for download. Once it's loaded the source code page allows you to browse all the directory structure of the XBIM project uh, the most interesting starting point would probably be XBIM framework slash head that contains the current um, stable release of the application. One easy way to get all of the source code in one go is for you to use the download button that you see up here and that allows you to download a single compressed folder with all the source code for compiling XBIM on your computer. However, that is probably not the easiest way to get started. XBIM is, uh, in fact, available to you in a different format that uh, does not require you to download all of the source code, but you can start from the binaries that we produced in a compiled version for your use. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you how to get those binaries in a very easy way. But before that, I wanted to show you another option that you have from the website, which is the download section. What I want to highlight today of the download section is XBIM Explorer. Um, XBIM Explorer is an example application that we have developed using XBIM to showcase ways in which you can use the toolkit to build your own uh, middleware application. Um, it has in time evolved to be a fairly useful um, IFC file explorer that I'm now going to demonstrate in a few seconds. The way for you to install this is through the click once installer. If you click here and you download the installer application, once you click on the download, XBIM Explorer will start and you'll be able to um, 
open an IFC file. Opening an IFC file is simple. You go to Model, Open, and identify the IFC file that is of your interest. Um, XBIM will build an XBIM file with the same content. We'll uh, understand later what the difference is, but the, you can open any IFC file. And uh, here you go, on the right hand side, you will see the 3D model of the file loaded for you. You'll be able to uh, move it around, rotate and investigate some of the details of the drawings. Once you select any elements, they will be displayed on the tree in the tree on the left um, and highlighted for you. In this case, I've selected a wall. I can also see some of the properties that it has, including uh, uh, materials, properties, quantities and similar information provided these are available inside the IFC file. In the few weeks I will post more videos on uh, ways in which you can use this application to investigate IFC files for development purposes. What we're going to do now though is to open the development environment to show you how to uh, write your first XBIM application. The XBIM toolkit has been developed in C Sharp and C++ using Microsoft.NET Framework and the development environment that we suggest you can use uh, for developing your own application with XBIM is Visual Studio. You can download a free copy of Visual Studio by going to www.visualstudio.com and uh, proceed to the downloads section. There are a number of versions here. You have a choice of downloading a free trial of the fully functional ultimate version of the um, software or you can uh, download one of the Visual Studio Express versions. Um, you can select the for Windows or for Windows desktop versions of the um, package. In this video we are not going to cover the processes of downloading and installing Visual Studio um, on your computer but there are plenty of other tutorials for you on the internet about this. This is how the Visual Studio Team Explorer version of 2012 looks like. Uh, the last requirement for your system to be able to work with XBIM is actually um, a Microsoft component called NuGet. NuGet will help you get the latest version of XBeam automatically on your system. If you don't have that already, you can go to the Tools menu, select the Extensions and Update item, and once you have selected the Online um, section on the left, um, the NuGet Package Manager is either one of the very first entries in the list, or you can search for it in this text box on the top right hand corner and once you have identified that you will, ha you will have options to install it in your system. We now have everything we need to start developing our first XBIM application. We will start by defining a new project of type Windows Form Application. On the bottom of this, of this window, we can specify the name that we are going to give to this application. We call it Demo Web. And it's going to be saved in at this location here, e slash dev. When I create OK, an empty form is going to be created for me. On the right hand side I can see the structure of my application there are a number of files that we'll look at uh, in further lectures in the future but for now we just uh, have to tell the system that we are going to use XBIM so if you right click on the solution manage NuGet packages for the solution is the option that you want to select in a few seconds NuGet, the NuGet interface is popping open and you will now be able to search for XBIM from this search box. As I type XBIM two options should come up. Today we're going to select XBIM 3D and install it. 
and the system will prompt us with uh, a reminder that we, there is there are license uh, constraints that we need to be aware of and you only have to accept those please read them carefully as they might have an impact on the way in which you're planning to release your application at the end of this process you can close the NuGet window and we are now ready to start writing our first XBeam application. So what we're going to do today is a very simple application that uh, pressing a button looks into an IFC files and counts the number of walls we find in it. So we look into the common controls toolbox, select a button, drag a button on our window and then select a text box and again drag it into the window of our application and we'll have to make care that this is a multi-line text. We can change the properties of these elements by the properties window that is generally on the bottom right hand side of the window but it might be in a different location. This is all very configurable in your system and we are now going to change the text that appears on the button by saying count the walls. That is enough for our user interface. If I now go back to my form and double click on the button, the system is going to bring me to the portions of code that is going to be executed once I am clicking on the button when running the application. In this introductory video, we're only going to use some code that has been made available to you on the web blog uh, page where you're watching this video. Uh, so you just have to go with your cursor between the curly brackets and just go, and after having copied the code from the web blog go to edit and paste. The only thing left to do is to press the start button at the top of the window and the application is started. If we press the count the walls button, now a window pops up and asks for an IFC file. You can select any IFC files in your, on your disk and press open. After a few seconds, the number of walls present in that file are going to be shown to you in the text box. I'll now very quickly review the structure of this simple code. In these first few lines we are telling the system to open, to show a, a file dialog box that will allow us to select a file. Then we are converting the IFC file that has been selected into an XBIM format and later we are opening that XBIM format to count to, to make a selection of all the walls in it and then set the text property of the text box to the count of all of them. So here we are. Through XBeam we should have been able fairly simply to open an FC file and get the information that you cared about. Of course much much more than this can be done but it's down to you and your ingenuity to use all the many features that XBeam offers to uh, produce some middleware application that will fill in the gaps of your billing information modeling processes. So thank you for following today's video. I hope it was useful and interesting for you. If you have any feedback for this video or for any topics that you would like us to touch on future releases, please get in touch on the contacts on the overarching.it website. Till the next time, bye bye.